Hey Shoebie Doodlers, how are you doing? Well recently I illustrated this book called Slime based on a theatre performance for the under fives and it is really really simple, it's deceptively simple. It's kind of a picture book but it's also a kind of a souvenir programme of the show. In the play Slug and Caterpillar are played by real people uh, but I've made them into kind of cartoony kind of characters. I'm going to show you how to draw Slug now. Well, here I have a pile of uh, of the original artwork. And uh, so this is how I've kind of drawn Slug. And, um, and it, it took a lot of drawing to be able to just draw Slug. And so basically you kind of have a kind of a Slug shape. Um, but to get, then you need that kind of curve coming down there as well. And then we got two eyeballs. And then Slugs also have kind of two extra horns, but I've turned them uh, into hands and and that is basically it uh, and then a bit of slime around like that um, and then you know you can then sort of turn it around into different <laughs> kind of um, expressions Woo! and you know hands on hips that kind of thing and um, so you might sort of do all sorts of Things like sort of looking down. So it's learning how to draw this very, very simple shape, this very simple character in different kind of human stances uh, to turn it from a, just being a slug into a character. OK, so when I'm illustrating, I pretty much always pencil out in first. And and again, and I say this again and again and again, <laughs> I draw very, very gently hardly pressing on the paper. When you press hard on the paper, it grinds the graphite in the lead into the paper and you just cannot, um, just cannot get it um, out again, you know, when you want to erase it later. So how's that feeling? It's kind of not, I'm not quite sure about, I think I'm actually going to have it a little bit more dramatic um, and, and have it kind of like that. I think it's just a bit more dramatic, I think is the word I'm looking for. So then that will want to go a bit more like that. And then we're going to want to move all this to get it to fit in the camera. <laughs> so I'll put that a bit like that. And then I'm going to have sort of eyes like that. I'm going to have him startled, maybe. So I'm going to have, say, maybe a bit of leaf because it's all about getting the leaf like that okay and so he's going to be shock horror maybe even happy shock horror <laughs> so then I am going to come around like that and I'm just going to stop it around about there and stop it about there so that I can Fit the hands in, one, two, three, four, and then continue like that. And we're going to want a bit of a, a slime trail. Actually, let's have the slime trail going off the page. Uh, so it's not going quite off the page, is <laughs> it? Anyway, and um, that will sort of come about like that. Blah, blah, blah. And then so this is kind of represents the, the flat bit that goes on the ground. And then we want to have eyes. And we want them kind of looking down there. So we can have them kind of like that. We want this kind of yay kind of happy smile with a little shadow underneath the lip there and then have this leaf just down there like that and then we're just going to need a bit of sort of something in the background there OK, I've just used my hairdryer to make sure that the ink is completely dry. And I'm just going to rearrange that so that it all fits nicely on there. There we go. 
and having made sure it's completely dried then I can erase those pencil lines because I know that the ink is not going to smudge if you don't wait the ink will smudge and I'm always asked so I'm using a, a rotary and ticky graphic so this is pigmented ink and and that is the secret because then that means that you can watercolor over it that means you can watercolor over the top of it and all the black ink won't kind of melt into the watercolor so now basically I'm going to start off with Naples yellow and this is a bit weird because I, I don't think I've actually picked my paints up for a couple of weeks <laughs> I've been doing all sorts of other things and um, so I'm going to paint this bit here Naples yellow so it keeps it kind of nice and like a pale tummy to the crown and then maybe I can put a little bit of browniness in there. It's a burnt umber I'm using in there just to give a bit of shade coming around into there. Um, and I'm going to have a bit of, I'm just going to do a very basic bit of kind of colour into there, into the leaf, like that. And then I just need to get a bit of preparation going on here. So, um, so what I'm using for the uh, the yellow here is Dr. Martin's Radiant Concentrated Watercolor Ink, and this really is incredibly bright. And I'm just putting a little blob of it on my palette like that, and I'm going to use a brush for this because the um, the water brush will weaken the colour effect so I'm going to use a proper <laughs> a proper old-fashioned brush <laughs> which is a rosemary number no. four designer series 344 I did a whole video about rosemary brushes and um, and then I'm just gonna sort of come in here and kind of I need a little bit of highlight down the back of the slug so if I go all the way around like that and then come around there so we got a nice shiny back like that and then I'm going to get a bit of orange watercolour and just kind of drop a little bit of orange in the bottom there like that just one a bit dry, there we are. Maybe a bit up there, underneath. And it's just kind of trying to blend that orange in like that. And then we're going to want to have orange, yellow hands. Because it's just yellow all over and then it's going to take the yellow up to the bottom of the eye stalk and get a bit more orange which is just going to drop some in oh, that's a bit too much so I'll just wash the brush clean it and then I can lift some of that off there and on there. Some of you will have seen this little spot here. <laughs> Orange will be panicking because <laughs> that's how you are. <laughs> Some people do that. And I'm not too bothered about that because if it was an illustration, I'd be able to kind of remove that in Photoshop. And I think maybe these days that's kind of one thing that um, makes Illustrator slightly different from kind of people who would um, paint things to go in picture frames and on walls and things like that uh, because then you need to have the actual piece of artwork perfect whereas I think an illustrator these days if it's going for print if it's going to be designed for print then you know you can do all sorts of tricks in illustrator uh, in Photoshop later um, so 
you know, you don't kind of panic quite so much as you used to. And I'm just going to do a little bit of this sort of orangey for just sort of shadow and texture along there like that. And then we also need to have a little bit of kind of shape and colour to these eyes. So it's a very kind of pale blue. And I'm, I'm now drawing the brush, taking all the moisture out of the brush so that I can just kind of suck up bits of <laughs> the um, the colour from there, but it's still, so I think I need a little bit more, so I'm just dropping in a bit more blue, just to sort of around there, that's okay, and I think I might be able to use that blue, I'm just going to add a touch of neutral to it, and just maybe put a little bit of shade in there, and then I'm just going to pull it out with some clean water, give a kind of a drop shadow like that and we can do that the same on the leaf like that and dry it and then I'm using Dr Martin's radiant watercolor and this is chartreuse and so you need to really shake these colors up and I'm just going to put a little blob of that onto there I don't need much I don't think and again, I'm using the um, using a real brush because, as I said, the water brush, um, you know, the the water keeps flowing behind, and so it will just keep um, thinning down the radiance uh, level of the of the, of the uh, Dr. Martin's watercolor, which I don't want to do. I paid for that radiant effect. <laughs> That's the effect that I want. And there you go. That is how to draw slug. And in the next video, I will show you how to draw caterpillar. If you'd like to know more about illustration and see more about slug and caterpillar, why not come and join me on Patreon? So uh, <laughs> make sure you keep coming back to the Shoe Rainer Drawing Channel for lots more illustration, children's books, stories, stuff like that. And in the meantime, Keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.